you have a person who weighs 200 pounds, person who weighs 160 pounds of the same height. The 200 pound person loses 40 pounds. They're now 160 pounds. The other person's always been 160 pounds. On the surface, they look identical. In fact, let's pretend they're siblings. But one was obese and he's now post obese. The other was never obese. Let's pretend that that one that lost the 40 pounds has really kind of dialed it in and doesn't yo-yo. He manages to stay there. It's three years later. Are they the same person yet? No, probably not. They're, so Rudy Leibel has done studies where I think they've had people out to a year, maybe two years, where they have them weight reduced. And the starvation response, this leptin-dependent starvation response, he hasn't seen any sign that it goes away. So could it maybe be possible? <clears throat> could it maybe be possible under some circumstances? Maybe, but um, the evidence that I've seen suggests that it is at least not typical. Um, I do think, so I want to specify that I think that the uh, set point around which the lipostat regulates can change based on dietary and environmental variables. And so, for example, you know, just to give a, an example that you'll be familiar with and others probably listening will be familiar with, if people go, if you take someone on a typical diet and put them on a low carb diet, you don't have to tell them to reduce their calorie intake. That will occur spontaneously and they will lose lose fat and end up t in the typical person comfortably being at a lower weight. They're not experiencing the starvation response. And you can see this on other diets as well. So I think there are things we can do to change the set point. However, that person, that doesn't mean that they are cured. So if they went back to their other diet, if they just went back to how they used to be eating, so they're not maintaining this attempt for weight reduction anymore, they generally will go back to where they were. So it's not that there's a durable resetting of the set point to like flipping a switch and resetting, like restarting your you know computer. It's more like the set point has been modified because it's in a different environment. And as long as you maintain that change, you can maintain the effect. But if the change goes away, then the effect goes away. Where do we think is the greatest window of vulnerability for someone? Just going back to these two hypothetical individuals who, and let's just now make it even more, let's take the genes out of it. Let's pretend they're identical twins, uh, born in the same household. Uh, clearly they both can, they both possess the genetic traits that would allow them in the right environment to become obese. Um, <clears throat> but one of them, you know, let's just say had an injury in high school that kind of kept him home from playing sports and he, he, he ended up playing more video games and kind of eating more. The other one was more active. So that explains why when they're now 40 years old, one's 40 pounds overweight, the other's not. Are there windows in a person's life when they are more susceptible to that resetting of a set point, a higher and higher set point, which it sounds to me like it never goes down. It's a monotonic crank, right? I don't really know. I honestly don't know. I mean, I think certainly there is a substantial potential for most people to gain weight at almost any point in life. Um, so I'm not really sure. I think, I think one, and, and, and by the way, let me say that I think there are other people who could probably answer this question better than me. There are people who have studied uh, the trajectory of weight gain over the life span. So part of the issue here is I'm just not that well versed on this literature. Um, but one thing I'll point out that is potentially interesting is there may be uh, an influence uh, of the intrauterine environment. So what's going on as you're developing um, inside the uterus. So 
there is evidence, I wouldn't call it strong, but there is evidence that women who undergo bariatric surgery for obesity and lose a lot of weight, their children are at a lower risk of developing obesity than women of similar weight who did not undergo bariatric surgery. And the effect size is large. Wait a second. Meaning two women of the same weight have children. One of them was is that weight naturally, and the other one is weight reduced at that weight, secondary to gastric bypass? No, no. So um, think about two women with severe obesity. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. One yeah, of okay. them has gastric bypass. Yep, okay. After that surgery, they both have children. But starting from different weights, obviously, because the gastric Correct. bypass one is weight reduced. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the children of the woman who had the surgery and had previously lost weight before getting pregnant will have a lower risk of obesity. And again, I wouldn't call the evidence strong. And what if what if she achieved what if she achieved that weight loss without gastric bypass? So what if you had two women who were overweight and one of them lost weight through diet and nutrition and then they got pregnant? I don't know. Um, I am not aware of data on that. I would, if you know, if you wanted me to guess, I would say it would probably be similar. Um, but is gastric bypass? Does that have, you know, is that really the same physiologically as um, the physiological situation that you get from diet and weight loss, diet and lifestyle? Uh, see, I don't, I don't think it is. I, I think, I think gastric bypass is a unique situation where provided a person doesn't take in liquid calories it's 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 quite durable uh, the the ruin why um obviously liquid calories can completely disrupt the feedback mechanism there um kind of similar by the way to a glp1 agonist this actually kind of gets back to i've seen patients who take semaglutide who don't lose weight. And the way you can cheat semaglutide is to drink your calories. If you, mm. if you drink massive amounts of calories, again, this is anecdotal. I don't think, I don't know that this has been studied. I'm just saying this based on observing a number of patients, but, um, you know, if you continue to drink a lot of alcohol, if you continue to drink juices and things like that, um, you, you're, you, you can sort of bypass some of the the, the GLP-1 effect on the brain, it would seem. That, that's my only explanation for why I see that. Um, and, and we do see that definitely with, with, with gastric bypass. So who, who knows about, about what, that would, the look, what that would look like.